Let's do an example of how to calculate basic earnings per share. So here's the formula we're going to use. We've got net income available to common shareholders in the numerator, and we're going to divide that by the weighted average number of common shares outstanding. And we'll do this for the company glow-in-the-dark toilet paper. Because who hasn't been in the bathroom late at night fumbling around looking for the toilet paper and saying, I only wish this toilet paper glowed in the dark. So, let's take a look at their financials. Uh, we've got net income for the year ended December 31st, 2021 of $600,000. They have preferred dividends for 2021 of $100,000. That's going to need to be subtracted from that $600,000 in the numerator when we do our formula in a moment. And then at the beginning of the period, on January 1st, 2021, they had 100,000 common shares outstanding. And at the end of the period, they had 300,000 shares outstanding. Now, I'm going to need to give you some information about when the new shares were issued during the period because they went from 100,000 shares to 300,000. So clearly there was a stock issuance. So here's our formula again. we got the net income available to common shareholders divided by the weighted number, uh, average number of common shares. So with the numerator, this is pretty simple, right? We're just going to take the 600,000 of net income and we're going to subtract the preferred dividends of $100,000. Now, if the company had any income attributable to non-controlling interest, we'd need to subtract that as well. But in this example, there's no income attributable to non-controlling interest. We'll do an example with that in a moment. Now, let's look at our denominator, the weighted average number of sh uh, common shares outstanding. To do that, we need to know when were the new shares issued. Okay, They started 2021 with 100,000 shares outstanding. However, on April 1st, 2021, okay, so after three months, they issued an additional 200,000 shares. Okay, so that's why there were 300,000 shares outstanding at the end of 2021. So for January, February, and March, three out of the 12 months of the year, there were 100,000 shares outstanding. But for the other nine months of the year, there were 300,000 shares outstanding. So going back to our formula and the numerator here, the net income a, a trip, uh, available to common shareholders, we got 600,000 of net income minus the preferred dividends of 100,000. Okay, and then to get our weighted average number of common shares, we say, well, there was 100,000 common shares for three twelfths of the year, and then there were 300,000 common shares outstanding for nine twelfths of the year. So if we do the calculations there, this right here is 25,000, and this right here is 225,000. So our denominator is going to be 25,000 plus 225,000, which is 250,000 shares, which is the weighted average number of common shares outstanding. And then our numerator, you can see, is 500,000. So we've got 500,000 numerator divided by 250,000 is going to give us $2 as the basic earnings per share for this company. Now, you might be thinking, well, what if there had been income attributable to non-controlling interest? So let's take a look at the retailer Walmart. If you've never been to a Walmart before, they make wonderful products like this poop emoji cake pan right here. Uh, they also make bacon scented mustaches. Uh, so there's a lot of wonderful products that you can pick up at your local Walmart. So here's Walmart's income statement, actually for 2021, 2020, and 2019, but we're just gonna look at 2021. So ignore this here and ignore this here, and we're gonna focus on this income statement right here. And we see we've got their consolidated net income. Uh, they got some net income attributable to a non-controlling interest. Uh, and then they've got the weighted average number of common shares outstanding, which they've already calculated for us. So we're not going to have to calculate the weighted average. They just give it to us. Okay, we see it right there. And all these numbers are in millions, except the per share amounts. So let's get to our calculations. We've got the net income. And so this number right here, I'm going to tie it right to this table. Okay, the net income before the non-controlling interest, we have $13.706 billion for Walmart for 2021. Okay, but then they had net income attributable to the non-controlling interest, okay, of $196 million. So when we're calculating our basic earnings per share, we're going to take this and then we're going to subtract this, okay? And then they don't have any preferred dividends, so we don't have to subtract any preferred dividends. So this is going to be the numerator in our equation, okay? And so it's going to be this amount right here, okay? So when you take the 13.706 billion and subtract 196 million, you get this, 
you get $13.51 billion. This is going to be the amount that goes in the numerator for calculating the earnings per share. And now, when we go to the denominator, the weighted average common share is outstanding. That's already given. Uh, and we've got 2.831 billion uh, common shares outstanding. So I've just taken those numbers. I've plugged them in here. Uh, this is the net income. And then we subtract uh, the income attributable to non-controlling interest. We divide that by the weighted average number of common shares outstanding. Okay? And so what we get is $4.77 as the basic earnings per share for Walmart. So let's go back to their income statement. And what do we see right here? The basic earnings per share, $4.77.